Hey, Jeremy here, and in this video, I wanna show you the new features and updates in Illustrator 2022. So the first thing they've updated is actually the 3D inside of Illustrator. They literally grabbed Adobe Dimension and put it into Illustrator. So now you can use lighting, materials, and make a whole bunch of 3D assets, which is really amazing. So here's a few examples of what I've created. You can see we've got some, you know, isometric typography. We created this little sand shape with shading. Um, you can create some other materials different you know revolving shapes and a whole bunch of cool stuff and i'm going to show you how to use it so i'm just going to move it to the side here the first thing you want to do is go to window and go to 3d and materials up the top this will open your window for that it looks like this and this is the fastest way to edit your shapes using this so i'm going to click on my shape now you've got four different ways to do it you've got plane extrude revolve and inflate plane is better for typography so if i'm going to um, go type and type you can see here, I'm gonna select this and click on plane. And now you can see we've got a whole bunch of rotation tools down the bottom here. So you can actually change it to front, you know, left, um, off axis, or you can just manually move the fonts like this, the rotation tools, and you can create some really interesting lockups. Then the next thing we can do is actually click on extrude. So if I click extrude, it should extrude that type if I increase the depth. It's on starts off at zero and if I can go all the way up. So if I go, let's go 300, you can see it's starting to extrude it and add depth inside of those shapes. Then I can always go down, scroll down and then rotate it again. You can click your mouse as well and um, just use the scroll wheel to rotate it a bit faster. As you can see there. Now I can go to my swatches panel and change the color and it should change the color as well. So that's how to use the plane. I'm just going to make this smaller and go to this shape here. So we can also use extrude by itself. As you can see, it will just add depth just like we did with the typography. But instead of this one, I'm going to control Z. I'm going to click on revolve. Now revolve will turn this shape into a donut. Now if I put my mouse over this little blue circle, I can actually rotate it from here instead of the panel. So I can spin it. I can rotate it, as you can see like this. I can scale it down if I want. Or once again, I can just rotate it using the tools on the side here. So if I want to rotate it like that. You can change the angle, the revolve angle, in the menu on the right hand side, as you can see that. So I can make it like a half donut if I want. I can switch back to top. So it's like a half donut. I can create an offset. So if I move the offset, you can see what it does. It adds more space inside the middle there. I'm just going to change it like that. So we can see we've turned it from a circle into just like a half semicircle there into a, a line. Beautiful. Now that's how you use the revolve. Now the next one is inflate. So if I click on inflate, it's going to turn it into like a cloud or a bubble type of effect, which is really cool. So I can add more depth to it. I can change the width of it as well to make it more flat. As you can see, it makes it a bit less round or I can make it heaps like puffy. Obviously, you got the rotation tools again as well. So I can rotate that if I want or I can leave it like this. So that's the inflate option. So we've got plane, extrude, revolve and inflate. Now, what if we wanted to add a texture on this? What you need to do is just go to the top. You can click on materials. Now, it already comes with a whole bunch of base materials that you can use. So you've got the default one here that adds nothing to it. Then you've got things like carved concrete, fabric, sand even, copper, gold, a whole bunch of cool stuff, even metal, which is interesting. So I can add any one of those things. So for example, let's uh, scroll down and let's click the Omnius one. So I'm gonna click on that. It might take a while to load. So you can see now it's added that texture, but it looks a bit blurry. We can go down to the main properties parameters here. Change the resolution and double it. And it should make it a bit more sharper within that texture. And you can see sometimes it has to load. So if your computer is not powerful enough, it can lag. So just give it some time. Beautiful. We can also adjust the roughness, the size, and all these different parameters as well. I think it looks really cool. And you know, you can play with all these settings, but I'm just gonna play around with a few of them. You got rotations, and then you've also got like contrast and luminosity you know, height, you can play around with all these and you can extend the window as well if you want to make it a bit longer. Now, if you want to upgrade, you can always click these little buttons here. It's going to take you to Substance Designer. 
it does cost extra money so I probably wouldn't recommend it for beginners um, but you can download you know more effects it's great if you're like a production uh, product designer um, or like a 3d designer I'm gonna exit out of that alrighty so what we can do now is click on the third menu up the top and click on lighting now lighting allows us to set the global light whether it's on top or bottom wherever it is so you've got, you can change the lighting to diffuse I can increase the intensity of that as you can see I can change it from top left or right whatever um, we're feeling but I'll just leave it on diffuse for now increase the intensity I can rotate the lighting as well I can change the light of it so if it's a high light or if it's a bit lower that's looking really cool I can even click and add shadows to turn that on right so if I want to make sure that the shadows aren't getting you know cut off you can increase the shadow bounds and you can see it's adding that shadow I can adjust the distance as well but the lighting will have an effect on the direction of the shadows I'm just gonna turn that off for now now this is not the final render of the object it's only you know a version um, that's not fully rendered so what you need to do is go to the right hand side of the 3d and materials and you can see this little drop down menu you want to turn on ray tracing now what we can actually do here is turn the quality from low to high and you've got reduce noise I usually leave that on render as a vector I'd probably leave that off and then if you want to always keep the same settings you just click tick remember and apply to all so if I click render now you'll see it'll start to render this shape and you'll start to see it in its better form so you can see there here the material it's rendered and obviously it's in low quality what I can actually do is up the top right if you want to turn off the render you can click this little square and it will turn it off we want to go to the settings go to ray tracing and turn on high this time and I'm gonna click render so you can see here it looks a little bit better quality which looks really cool now once again I can select the shape that we want to adjust and I can click the square and turn it on we can always turn it back on by clicking that button we don't always have to go to the drop down we can just click it again if I, I can go to materials and maybe I want to change it to like copper or something so let's click on copper and see that what it does with the material so you can see it added that uh, material and I'm just going to click that square to render it and see what that looks like so you can play around with those materials it's super fun it's great if you're having like a 3d design or maybe for a website or um, a certain illustration then you have so much control of what you can do here Boom, so there we go. That's what it looks like. It looks really nice. And if you're having troubles with the raster effects, you can always go to effect, click document raster, and you can make sure that the resolution, you can do high, but I usually use it on medium. It, um, just make sure that it's looking the best quality. So that's what it looks like. As you can see there with the material there, it looks really, really cool. You have a whole bunch of options with these tools. So that's how you use the 3D and materials. I'm just going to close that for now. I'm going to show you a couple other new things that they have. One cool thing is that you can actually embed Photoshop documents now. So what I can do is go to file, click on place. You can see I can actually upload a PSD file. So I'm going to double click that. And then it'll, it will pop up on my mouse and I can drag this like this. Now you can see at the top left it says linked file. If I click it, you can see that it's linked. We can also add it to the cloud as well. But we can also edit it. So up the top you can see the, the button that says edit in Photoshop. So I can click that now. Then what if I want to turn the um, that screen off, right? I'll click Control S to save it. Now if I go back to Illustrator, it'll say, would you like to update? Automatically, click yes. And now you can see it updates in live in real time. You can also click embed as well and you'll get some import options. So you can click preview. Um, you can convert layers to objects or you can leave it on a flattened layer as a single image. So I'll click OK on that. And now you can see it's an embedded um, object and you, know, you can use it as an image, etc. So that's one really cool thing. You can also now add comments. So I'm going to bring up my comments window. What you want to do first is you want to click continue and make sure you save this to the cloud. So I'm going to click save. So once you have that up, what you can do is click on share and you can see at the top right corner, I can invite people. So I've got my email here. I can invite other people. So if I want to type in my email and I can say, please, uh, please review. And I can click invite to edit and that will send an email out to my email there or to your teammate, whoever it is. You can also just copy the link as well and you can paste it. So if I paste it in my browser, it will load that file in the cloud and they can see that. And obviously they need to log in and then basically they can comment from there if they want. They don't have to actually open Illustrator, which is cool. You can also write comments as well. Um, 
update design file. I can click submit and it should add a comment right here as you can see there. We can also click resolve if it's done or we can edit or delete that um, comment which is really cool. So if they just open the comments, they're going to see that. Beautiful. So that's doing comments. One other cool thing now as well is you've got the rotate tool. So you can press shift H. It's also loaded on the left here so you can see rotate. And what I can actually do is left click on my mouse and rotate the tool like this. So maybe you're working on an illustration or whatever it is. You can, um, you know, do that. If you press escape, it's going to reset the view to the standard view. So that's a really cool thing if you are someone that needs to move around a lot on your artboard. Now, one other feature is you can actually select multiple things by a font. Instead of just selecting by a color, you can go to the top left corner, click select. And now if I get onto same, you can see now it gives us the option to select by font family, font size, text fill color, or whatever that is. So if I click font family, and let's say I click on this font, select same, and I click font family, it's going to select all these other fonts in the document with the same font. So I think that's really handy. And obviously you've got the object as well, so you can select by strokes, um, etc. But um, we've got here and you can do a whole bunch of stuff with that. So I think that's a really neat tool. If you've got a lot of text or a long document and you need to find a specific font. The other cool thing is that Adobe um, type kit actually auto activates fonts now that are missing. So all you got to do is go to edit preferences and I'm going to go down to file handling. Now at the bottom, you can see fonts. It says auto activate Adobe font. So I'm going to click on that and press OK. And then now when there's like a missing font, maybe you delete it off your computer, it's going to go into Typekit and actually update that. So I think it's really cool. So thanks so much for watching. These are all the new updates that I found really useful in Adobe Illustrator 2022. Let me know if this um, was helpful. Drop a comment. It helps the video on the algorithm. And subscribe for more design content every week. I'll see you in 2022. Thank you.